after the Packers put that beating onto the Bears last week, I, I've had troubles putting, wearing green all week. Uh, <laughs> the last two weeks we've been doing what we've been calling vision casting, asking or answering the question of why do we exist? Why does Notre Dame exist? And hopefully we can make out some of that sentence uh, in our heads. But we exist to offer every person a life-changing encounter with Jesus so all might be rescued and have abundant life. We talked about last week how just as Fred Pepperman heard the faint cries of his daughter in the riptide and how he entered into the riptide to rescue his daughters, so too Jesus hears your cries and mine this morning on whatever it is and that he does something about it. I mean, namely, that he entered into the world to, to save us, to rescue us from all things of which that we can't rescue ourselves from, namely sin and death and Satan and hell. And as we mentioned last week, the current of the riptide in our culture of where we're at as God continues to get pushed to the side, the current of the riptide is getting stronger as we looked at those numbers the last number of weeks of the decline in life expectancy, the, 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 the more and more of God pushed to the side and how more and more people seem to be going under the current, confused, looking for help, hurting. And because the gospel, because the gospel has power to change lives, to give hope, to be the answer to which is the answer to the cry of every human heart on what is the purpose of life. We believe that God's calling us to enter into the riptide, to take people by the hand, to show them the way out, and to show them the way to him. And so as this last week of vision casting, this week we wanna look at the danger of complacency, we wanna look at a foundational tool, and then thirdly, getting mobilized. So first, the danger of complacency. St. John Henry Newman once said, health of body and mind and high spirits and riches, they are a great blessing for those who can bear it. He went on to say, most people can't bear it. Most people can't bear the of good health of mind, of body and riches and high spirits because a, a general rule, a, a general principle in the spiritual life, and there are of course exceptions to general rules, but when health is good, mind, body, spirit, when things are good, when there's riches, oftentimes leads to being comfortable and that comfortable leads to a complacency towards spiritual things. A couple of weeks ago, it was 9-11 and they walked into the second grade classroom and they were in the textbook reading about 9-11 and I shared with them where I was on 9-11 and, and sharing with them that, remember, after 9-11, the churches were packed. Something happened, a trauma happened, something that, 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 that shook us from a normal comfort, complacency, where awakened people, oh yeah, spiritual, divine, there's gotta be more. But the, the danger of the complacency is that it, that it prevents us from hearing the cry. It prevents us from hearing our own cry, which was our homework last week of hearing our own cry, and it prevents us from hearing the cry of those out there, those who are hurting. And as, as we mentioned the first week, it's, it ultimately neglects God's heart with the prodigal son and the, the lost coin and the shepherd who leaves the one to go get the 99, what, what it revealed was God's heart at his core is to bring back what is lost and to seek them out, those who are hurting. And we see this in our, in our readings today. Complacency is at the center of our first reading and our gospel. First reading to this week is from the, the prophet Amos. And Amos, the Lord through Amos says this, woe, to the complacent. And then he paints a picture of the, the complacent. He says they're lying upon beds of ivory, 
stressed out comfortably on their couches, all the food that they want, drinking wine from bowls. So they're not even drinking wine from wine glasses, they're drinking it from bowls. They are so comfortable and have led them to such a spot of complacency towards spiritual things. They don't hear the cry. They don't notice it. It doesn't bother them. Later on in the reading, it says, they were not made ill over the collapse of Joseph. What's going on at that time? What's the class of Joseph? It's the Northern kingdoms and the Southern kingdoms, the divide, the moral corruption all around them. They weren't bothered by it. They didn't hear the cry. They did nothing. They were too comfortable lying upon their couches, drinking wine from bowls. And the same thing with our parable with Lazarus and the rich man. The, the rich man's not condemned because he was rich, because of the wealth. It's because he had total disregard to the man that was sitting outside his house that he didn't even notice because he, the wealth, the comfort, made him complacent to spiritual things, of which is of the most importance. I think the number one thing that's gonna keep us here at Notre Dame from reaching our vision is complacency. And it's so easy to be complacent, like even in the midst of the, of the, of the, the numbers that we talked about of the decline in life expectancy, you know, the increase of, of, of godlessness in our culture, it's just, it's easy to be complacent. So we have to fight the danger of complacency. Which brings me secondly to the second point of a foundational tool. We've been, as we've been laying out the vision here, we've been talking a lot about Shia LaBeouf and his conversion and becoming Catholic. Now, we've talked about him now in the last, of the three weeks, I'm not canonizing him. He, like, he's not a saint. We gotta pray for him. Who knows what the future holds for him? We gotta pray for him. But it is to hold it up because it's a good thing to point to. It's a good model of him hearing the gospel, hearing the proclamation of the good news coupled with that experience with the Capuchin friars, of them just, of, of him experiencing the gospel through authentic relationships. As, in, as, as he mentioned, as he mentioned, it was just the laughter that those Capuchins brought him in on. It was them sharing their ice cream with him. And as we mentioned last week, the place to start is simply by telling, telling someone that their life matters more than they could ever imagine. And another way to say that is it's the place to start is love. And as St. Paul to Timothy last week says, God desires all to be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. So truth and salvation are the same thing. They go hand in hand. But as one author put it, I think it was Peter Crave says, love is the bridge of which truth can pass over. Try to just, here's the truth, here's the truth without love. There's no bridge. Love is the bridge in which truth can pass over. And so when you have the, a, a winsome proclamation of the gospel coupled with, with what Shia LaBeouf experienced, powerful things happen, lives are changed. And I saw that firsthand in my first assignment at Our Lady of Mercy. So concretely, what does that look like here? The primary way here at Notre Dame that we're gonna give a winsome proclamation of the gospel to those that don't know him, those who have fallen away, those that are unchurched, that way is gonna be through, called something called Alpha. And it's gonna be our primary tool that we're gonna, it's, it's gonna be our primary evangelization tool to invite and to bring someone. It's gonna be a dinner, a nice dinner, a free dinner with a movie, which is the winful proclamation of the gospel and then a small group discussion. It's not primarily for you. It's for those who are away, who are unchurched, who have questions. It's gonna be offered multiple times a year. So at any given moment, you're gonna know when the next one's coming up. So when you're having a conversation with your child, with your grandchild, with a neighbor, a coworker, and they're experience, telling you maybe a rough time that they're going through, you can, you can say, you know what? We have something coming up in the church. It, it, it's, it's a dinner, 
It's a movie, it's a conversation, and you can invite them to it. You can bring them along with you. And you can be confident that the person that you're gonna invite or bring will be loved upon. That's the come, but we're not there yet because I think we're too complacent. So lastly, to mobilize. First, we need to mobilize for mission. And we're gonna, we're gonna mobilize through mission through something called the Rescue Project. And so similar to what Father Burke and I did here at Advent, last, last Advent with the proclamation of, of, of gaining that biblical worldview of created, captured, rescued response to go deeper into that, Again, creating that same culture, environment that we're gonna have for Alpha so that we can catch that with a dinner that's free, that's good, a video and small group discussion. And that's gonna begin on January 24th. We want as many parishioners to go through this as possible so that we catch that culture that we ourselves are, are more overwhelmed by the gospel, that we know that we've been rescued that we know that we've been called to rescue others, but we've got to get knocked. I need to get knocked more out of complacency. I, I deeply hold that every person has deep within their heart a desire to be and to do great things. Every one of us. And it's also the case I think that God has for this parish to be and to do great things in a world that is hurting and is crying out. We exist to offer a life-changing encounter with Jesus so that all might be rescued and have abundant life. And it requires us to listen to the cry and to enter into the riptide and take someone by the hand and to say your life matters. This is the way out. This is the way to him. This is the answer to the longing of your heart. And I know that because he's the answer of my heart is what we can say. And that requires us of not being complacent towards spiritual things. Woe to the complacent, the Lord says through the prophet Amos who doesn't hear the cries. So don't be complacent. Visit the website even after this mass, sign up for January's rescue project. And maybe we're signing up because we feel, maybe we're in a spot where we feel like we're taking on water and we're sinking a little bit. To sign up for the rescue project, to jump into the riptide because God uses rescued people to rescue people.